sorry if I sound a little tired, I have a fever. I've had quite an intense fear of needles for pretty much all of my life that I can remember. When I was a little child, my mom would have to hold me down, like physically restrain me in order to get my vaccines and get my blood drawn. I, I remember I, I was always so upset about it, not about the experience of being restrained like that, but the fact that I was making such a scene and it was such a hassle for everybody involved. I didn't want to be a difficult child <laughs> and this really intense fear was kind of coming in the way of me being a good girl and I, I, that's all I ever wanted. <laughs> I, yeah. There were also times later in life when I would be getting a vaccine at school, so the whole class would be getting it, and then right as I was meant to get it, I would just run away because I couldn't handle the panic. Then a parent would have to bring me to get the vaccine later, and it was embarrassing. It was... it never hurt enough to <laughs> make it feel like it was justified for me to have that sort of a response. I would often start to cry. One time I was having my blood drawn and I started having such an intense panic attack that I didn't even know where I was anymore, so I wasn't even able to find the healthcare person that <laughs> was supposed to draw my blood. I was in such a state of panic that I couldn't think logically and yeah. I also had an experience in which I was getting a suspicious looking mole removed. So, you know, people were going to be cutting into my skin. And I was completely fine with that. I wasn't afraid of that. But then when they brought out the needle that was needed for the local anesthesia that I was going to be getting, that caused me to have a panic attack. Not the experience of feeling someone cutting into my skin. That, that was not something that I was afraid of. It was the tiny little needle. <laughs> there was even one time when I was already old enough to kind of decide for myself whether I wanted a vaccine or not, that I, I, I just refused to take one, even though I would have gotten it for free, and now it would cost me money to get it, so yeah. Needless to say, my fear of needles has always been a burden for me. It's, it's not great. But in the year 2021, I have actually, I think, almost completely overcome this fear of needles. I have had my blood drawn two times and I have had two vaccines and it seems right now that I am completely okay with it. Like the last time that I got a vaccine, which was at the time of recording, it was one day ago. The fear that I felt was so minimal that I think it might actually just be at the normal level of fear that you would feel over a needle at this point. So what I'm here to do is talk about what helped me to overcome my fear of needles and these are all just based on my personal experiences. I'm not a professional or anything. I am studying psychology, but I have not even studied anything related to things like these, so just keep that in mind. These things might be different for different people, I'm just here to talk about what personally helped me. So I guess the first thing to realize is that, that when you're really scared of something, you know, sometimes a way to avoid that anxiety over it is to just never interact with that thing ever. But with needles, it's not really something that you can decide. Obviously, there's things like vaccines that, though they are optional, they are still something that you should be getting. But at the end of the day, you're probably going to be hospitalized at some point in your life. And at that point, you're going to have to confront the fear of needles no matter what. So yeah, the fear of needles isn't something that you can just keep avoiding forever. And in my personal experience, when you have anxiety about something, avoiding the thing that scares you is going to make that fear stronger and stronger. So even though the first time you try to confront that fear is always going to be the most scary, the sooner you do that, the less it's going to hurt. So one thing that I have been doing is that whenever I've had a needle-related appointment, whether that is having to get some blood tests done or a vaccination, I have booked the appointment at the earliest possible chance, just so that the fear can't get bigger. And because once I have booked the appointment, then at that point I'm going to have sort of a really strong incentive to go through with that appointment, even if it's something that I'm afraid of. So just book the appointment first and then you can be scared about it later. Another thing that has helped me is that you need to remember that your primary goal in the situation is just getting through the procedure, again, whatever that is, and looking cool or not having a panic attack or not 
peeing your pants. That's a, those are all secondary goals. And at the end of the day, as long as you have the thing done that you needed to get done, you have succeeded. Like you shouldn't be letting the embarrassment over how you might react to the situation just completely stop you from getting the procedure done anyways. As long as you manage to get through the procedure, no matter how much you cry, no matter how much you scream, y- you have still succeeded. And that's the most important thing. <laughs> Acting like like a normal human being in that moment is something that you can work on later, but at first you should just focus on getting the thing done in the first place. When it comes to discussing, I guess, phobias, there's always people saying that, oh well, just it doesn't even hurt much, you know, it's not dangerous. So, therefore, you shouldn't be afraid. And I mean, if being logical works for you, then good. But then if it doesn't, if just trying to will the fear to go away with facts and logic doesn't work, then you should move beyond that. Because if it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. You aren't really a logical being. You're an emotional being and fear is an emotion. And that's not always something that you can overcome with logic. So when logic fails, then you just try something else. Don't get too stuck on the logic part. Now, when you're actually in the moment of getting a vaccine or getting your blood drawn, here's something that you should remember. The healthcare professional who's stabbing you with a needle has probably seen everything before. They have seen people faint, they have seen people panic. It's it's something that they are probably very familiar with. Healthcare professionals are all individuals and some might be better than others, but in general, I feel like healthcare professionals are trained to deal with these kinds of situations and they are trained to be able to help you if you're afraid. If they notice that you're nervous, they might start asking you about things in your life and that is an invitation to monologue because monologuing about something that interests you can be a very good distraction. They know that, that's why they're asking you to do that, so don't shut down, start talking. If they try to make conversation with you, then take that invitation. It's to help distract you from what's going on and that is going to help, at least for me it has always helped immensely, to focus on a conversation or even a monologue instead of the scary thing that's going on. You should also bring it up if you've had any problems before, like if you always faint when the needle makes contact with your skin, you should probably tell them that so that they can like have you lie down. In general, if you have problems with needles, tell the person that. They might be able to help. Just (laughs) communicate with the healthcare professionals. For me, and I've also heard for other people, the actual pain of the needle is not usually the thing that makes us scared, but there are certain things that you can do to alleviate the pain as well. So one thing, and this is actually something that was taught to me by a healthcare professional, is to look away, but not close your eyes. If you're looking at the needle, then, you know, that can be very disturbing for some people, that can cause people to faint. But if you close your eyes, then you're probably going to have all your other senses be heightened, and then you're going to feel it stronger. Just look away, but keep your eyes open, look at something else. Another thing that you can do is let your arm drop to your side instead of having your hands in your lap. This is not always a possibility, like when you're getting your blood drawn, in my experience, you know, there's going to be a certain position that they are going to have your arms be in, so you can't control this, but when you're getting a shot, then most probably you're going to have some freedom over how you're going to be holding your arm. And if you have your hands in your lap, which is something that I used to do, then it's going to be much harder to relax your arm than it would be if you just dropped it to your side. That's all the advice I have. I I would love to know if this is helpful to anyone, and please feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section. Tell the things that have helped you if I didn't mention them and good luck with overcoming your fear of needles. Thanks you. Thanks you. (laughs) Thank you. Bye-bye.